All right, so we are in the Wrangler Overland and we're just gonna take a look at the head unit and the dash and all the little techie stuff that it's got inside. So here we have a huge display. It's all completely touchscreen. There actually aren't any buttons down below to control apart from the tune browse scroll, which is basically for your radio and the volume over here. There's also a screen off button just below off the video and it just turns it off. Now, Fiat Chrysler Australia, basically Jeep, Chrysler, Alpha, ABBA, all of them have incorporated this new U Connect app system, which essentially is your main menu. So here down the bottom are your little options. You've got radio, media, media climate, your U apps, which is where all your options are, your controls, your nav and your phone. So we'll just start with radio, which is there. You've got FM, AM, DAB, you can browse and tune set your presets that you want, your one, two, three, four, five, six, there's 12. You can have the map there as well, that shows up quickly. And you can just seek as you go through. Then we move on to media. This is where you can connect your USB, your aux, your Bluetooth, or USB two and three, which essentially is your first USB, which is basically under here, it's not on the video, your second, which is underneath the armrest in there, and the third would likely be the ones in the back row, because there's actually a fair few USB ports, which we'll go through a bit later. You can also put your map here as well, which is convenient. Your climate, which is just off, uh, because the car is off, but I'll turn it on shortly and we'll go through it. Here are your controls. I'll go through them as well once I turn the car on. Here is the nav which isn't too bad of a system, but because this does have CarPlay and Android Auto, I would be more inclined to be just using Google Maps or Waze or Apple Maps, depending on what you use, if I'm plugging in the phone into CarPlay. So we can just view the map here. We can just go home. We can go to work. Those pop up quite easily. Where to? We can just put town center, see what happens. And just I don't want to start the GPS because it's never going to stop. We also have trails here. Trails. Which we can start recording. Record a trail if we want to go off-roading. Then we have nav settings. Map setup. You've got your appearance. Your displays. Vehicle icon. This is really cool. A blue arrow. Red arrow. A hexagon. Okay, a Grand Cherokee or a Wrangler. Let's keep it as a Wrangler. I like that you get to choose that. Traffic incidents, speeds and flows, 3D city, digital terrain, and basically all the options you would need in a little GPS setup. There's your speed limit, announce speed limit warning. No, I don't want that. Why is it be announcing it? Your guidance, voice by voice, signposts, route options. Basically all the options. You can change where per use toll roads allowed. That's where you change if you want tolls off and unpaved roads allowed. Probably would be all right with this car, but let's say no. Then let's go back and we go to traffic. Real time, provide details that save over 10 minutes. You know what? Provide details that save over five minutes. It's better. And map update. Sure, you can download it on the USB. Then we go to the apps and you've got your projection manager, which is just all your phone details, your paired audio devices. Crikey, one of the previous reviewers, Ali, Terry and Robin, nice work. Here is your app manager. There's no running apps. Mirror dimmer, that is pretty cool. Just does it. Media, it just goes to the media option down here. So your U apps is where you're sort of main menu would be now you've got your audio settings this is your balance and fade whether you want it to go front back right left doesn't make a difference change your equalizer up and down i've got it on that level the speaker system is great it's got a nine speaker alpine audio system which is awesome because the car is so small the bass is punchy and the mids are quite clear which i like a lot Increases volume level relative to an increase in speed. Yep, sure. And autoplay. So as soon as you plug your phone in, it'll start playing automatically. It's 
go back here. Now we've got settings, language, display. Okay, let's, we're gonna turn the car on, might get a bit louder. But now we can show a few more options, which we didn't have before. So first off, we've got the driver heat. It's literally just one button, done. Turn it three levels, passenger heat, one, two, three, and your heated wheel, just on and off. Here are your controls. You've got your mirror dimmer. Just the way. Here's your backup camera. You basically just click backup camera and in the options, and it will just show you the back camera, even if you're not in reverse, which is a really cool little option that it's got. Uh, settings. We're back here. Display, mode, theme. Oh, okay. I don't like the green that it was on before, so let's change that while we're at it. There is a lot of themes here for, wow, there is 17 themes, wow. I'm just gonna pick one and run with it. Um, I don't like these. Okay, bear with me. Sure, let's go with that. Here is your touchscreen beep, no, that's annoying. Turn by turn, pop-up display, nothing crazy there. Units, metric, custom. Kilometers an hour, kilometers, bar. I'm gonna get PSI. Fuel consumption liters per 100, we're in Australia. That's the system we use. It's the best system. Voice, show command list, and so on. Clock, 12 hours, nothing crazy there. Safety and driving assistance. War, okay, so forward collision warning. We want a warning and active braking. What's the sensitivity? Medium, that's what I usually use. Park sense, sound and display. Yes, for the beeps, for your front and back uh, sensors. And volume, it is quite loud. I'm gonna put it on low. It actually, yeah, it's really loud. Blind spot, lights and a chime, hill start assist. Yes, blind spot. I want lights and a chime, just in case the lights aren't that bright. Mirrors and wipers. Headlights with wipers, yes. Lights. Headlight off delay. Headlights with wipers. There's just some headlight options. Doors and locks. Auto door locks. Auto unlock on exit. Flashlights with lock. First press of key fob unlock does all doors in the driver door. Yes, all doors. Auto on comfort. Auto on, DR, heat, seat, and steering wheel. All starts. Uh, that's from everything. Engine off, headlight off, delay. Cool. Audio, there are a lot of settings. That's just the options we've seen before. Phone, Bluetooth, do not disturb, headphones. That's just the smartphone manager. Reset, radio, and system information. Traffic announcements, etc. We have seen all of these. Now we are going to go back, and here we have climate off, which is just, okay, just climate off, and then rear. Okay, cool, you got a button there, which you also have here. You also have a few buttons, I'm just gonna lower this a bit. Here is your wheel, manual buttons, here is your front, and your back defoggers, demisters, here is your heated seats, and your driver's seat. Now here is the screen off button. Here is your descent, traction, auto off, and mute. Now what other options do we have? We've done the off-road pages, the media, the radio, that's basically all your settings here. And we'll go to media, climate is there. Here are your controls for your heated seats, your heated wheel, your backup, and your settings. And that's basically the display. Now I'm gonna go down a little more here this is where, first off, this is how you do your windows. It's in the middle here. This is media. You pop that up, you have your AUX 3.5 millimeter, you have a USB 2.0, and then you have a USB-C, which is pretty cool. You then have a normal USB 2.0, basically on top of where this camera is sitting now in the armrest inside the storage. And then in the back, in the back row, where passengers sit at the back, you have four USB ports. You have two USB 2s, so two of these, and two USB Cs. So you can essentially have up to four things charging at the back. I'm 
I'm not sure if it would be able to do both at the same time, but at least two would be able to charge, which is for two passengers is plenty. There is also an AC. Essentially, you can just plug anything in, like a laptop, a kettle or a microwave if you're feeling adventurous and just plug it in at the back, which is really exciting. And it's strange that it's placed just in the back. Usually these things are in the boot, but there isn't really a boot in this car, so they decided to put it where the passengers would be sit sitting, which is great. Nice work, I like that. We're now gonna move on to the dash and what we see there. You have analog clusters on the left and the right, the left being your rev counter, the right being your speedo. And then you also have what mode you're in, two wheel drive, four wheel drive, high range, low range, or neutral. Now this in the middle is all digital, speedometer where you can see the digital speedo and your fuel gauge on the right and your heat on the left. Now we go down and it's got little two on the bar that shows all the different options. So two is vehicle info and you can just go left and right and it can show you a transmission temperature. I'm just gonna turn the camera a little bit here. Your coolant temp, your tire pressure, your battery voltage, your oil, and your temps for them as well. You then go down to three, which is your off-road options, and you have your pitch and roll. Actually, I will show you the off-road, which is a really cool feature on this thing. I've got to go to the off-road pages. I'll get back to that. Adaptive cruise control off and how close to the car in front, which you can choose on the wheel you want to be. Now we have fuel economy which you can reset and you have it for basically Odo 1 and Odo 2. You then go down your trip info, 1 and 2. Then we have a stop start, not ready, engine off. That is your audio, whether you're on Bluetooth, you're in CarPlay, whatever device. Any messages stored, no messages, good to know. And press OK to enter screen setup. Center. Okay, this is cool. You can decide what you see on each of those. Time, compass, range to empty. Ooh, that's pretty cool. I'm going to put the range there. Now we're going to do the current gear. Ooh, okay. Okay, I like this. Upper right, upper left. I'm going to put the... You know what? I'm going to put the trip a distance. And then we are going to do the center... What am I going to put there? No, speedo needs to be big. Time, range to empty, average economy. Oh, there is a lot of options here. This is great. Here's I'll well put the audio. Nice. I like that a lot. Now we're going to press OK to exit. No, left to exit. There we go. That is really cool. Vehicle settings, speed warning. Off, on, no, that's it. And now back to the speedo. Great, that is really cool. All right, there is the dash that you can see. But now I'm gonna go back to the head unit to look at the off-road pages. Okay, here are the off-road pages that we missed before. But basically here you can see your pitch and roll, your degree of your altitude, your coordinates, accessory gauges. This is cool, makes it look like it's a race car. Although it's not, obviously. You've got your transmission temp, your oil pressure, your voltage, your oil temp and your coolant temp, which you can also show on the dash as well, which is quite nice to know, if just to make sure you're monitoring everything and it doesn't get too hot. Then we also have the drive train, which shows the steering angle and the transfer case, and it sort of is live as you're going, which is quite cool. So there is the off-road pages, which we've got a mirror demo that you can just actually select from here when the car is on. But overall, this system is very good. They upgraded this from the previous model, which was a great idea given that it was starting to get dated. And the integration between this system and the dash just works effortlessly. The amount that you can customize on it is great. You can show anything you want on the dash when you're driving. It doesn't have a heads up display, which I'm not too fussed about because everything is digital on the instrument cluster, the digital cluster, and I love that. And there's so much technology in here, much more than the outgoing models. Heaps of USB ports just everywhere. You'll never be fighting for it. You'll never need a portable charger. But overall, the tech in this car is great. And last but not least, do not forget to subscribe. 
to our channel. Stay tuned for more videos and watch out for the review and other Wrangler Overland videos that will be coming out and linked in the description below. Cheers.